The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hello, Mr. Marvin. Hi, Ethelbert. Uh, are we on the air? Yeah, but say, you don't have your script with you tonight. Oh, I don't need a script for what I have to say. Everyone knows that the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation is the world's largest maker of household glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, The Gray Kitten. On the edge of our city is lovely Greenwood Lake. Just before midnight, an automobile pulls up to one of the big bungalows along the shore, and a tall, dark man gets out. Seeming to brace himself, he goes to the door and opens it with his key. Seated before the fireplace is a large and determined-looking middle-aged woman. Hello, Carlos. Why, Hester, this is a pleasant surprise. Where's my sister? Uh, Jesse... Uh, left for Detroit this evening. Detroit? Didn't she let you know? She certainly didn't. She phoned me this morning and said she wanted to discuss something with me. She said nothing about leaving town. Oh, you know our Jessie. Late this afternoon, she says, Carlos, my darling, I must leave for Detroit tonight to attend to some business. So? Like a good husband, I arrange her transportation and take her to the 8 o'clock train. I knew Jessica was becoming irresponsible six months ago when she married you. But I didn't think she was so far gone. Why, I've been waiting here ever since half past eight. And she... she didn't tell you I'd be here. Not a word. Oh, the woman's gone crazy. Uh, when she phoned you this morning, uh, what did she say she wanted to see you about? She didn't say, but I had an idea, Carlos, that you'd been treating her badly again. Why, my dear Hester, why don't you mind your own business? Because I don't trust you. My sister's 50 years old. Young men of your type marry middle-aged women for just one reason, money. Mm. I cannot hope to change your opinion, I suppose. No. So, I'll be starting back to town. I'll help you with the coat. Don't bother. Carlos, how did you get all that dirt on your hands? Dirt? And your shoes and trouser legs, they're covered with it. Oh, my car got stuck in the mud on the shortcut road. I had to push it out. Oh. Just when will Jessica come back from Detroit? Uh, she wasn't sure. She let me know. I see. I suppose she went to Detroit to turn some more of her property there into cash for you to spend. I do not know. And furthermore, I'm not interested in Jesse's man. <laughs> Good night, Hester. Good night. Oh, uh, I nearly forgot something. Forgot? Uh, that cat of Jessica's had a kitten tonight. A cat? Daisy. I heard her meowing when I came in and <laughs> found her in Jessica's room with one kitten beside her. It had just been born. It was born at what time? Oh, about half past eight. In Jessica's room? I just told you it was. Since Jessica's away, I'm taking Daisy and her kitten home with me. You wouldn't give them proper care. I... I put mother and child in a box in here. You see? Look at her. A gray kitten. All gray. Except for that white streak on its head. It... It's just like the streak of pure white that runs through Jessica's gray hair. Take that kitten out of here. Take it away. Oh. I... As you said, Hester, I, I wouldn't know how to take care of it. Take the cat's box to my car. No, no, you carry the box. You act as though you're afraid of this cat and her kitten. Come, uh, I help you in your car. Oh, very well. Be, uh, be sure you let me know when you hear from Jessica. I will let you know, Hester. I, I will let you know. <laughs> Hello, 
Hogan, you're absolutely nuts. The longest game ever played in a major league was between Brooklyn and Boston in 1920. It went 26 innings. Yeah, I... wait till I get my hands in a record book. I'll oh, show you. Got a record. Goodness sakes, do you two have the... to make all this noise? This wise guy. Wise oh. guy. That's your phone. Bye. Yeah, go on. Hello. Hello, Homicide Bureau, Captain Logan speaking. This is Miss Hester Simmons. Who? Hester Simmons. I live at 347 Parkview Drive. So, uh... Yes, Miss Simmons. What can I do for you? She gives a good address so he gets polite. Oh, shut up, Casey. Uh, go ahead, Miss Simmons. I have something very important to talk to you about. Oh, what is it? My sister has been missing for three weeks, Captain. I, I'm i afraid she's been murdered. Murdered, Casey? Oh, tell me about your sister, Miss Simmons. It's too long a story to tell over the phone. Come to my house, please. Now. All right, I'll be there in 15 minutes, Miss Simmons. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, you and Miss Williams will have to excuse me, Casey. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. That little word murder we just heard has made us curious. Just a front page story, pal, with pictures. Okay. Come on. Your sister's husband told you that night, Miss Simmons, he just put her on the train for Detroit? Yes, Captain. But now I have every reason to disbelieve him. Uh, excuse me, Miss Simmons. What is the name of your sister's husband? Carlos Gavassos. Gavassos. Uh, right? Go on with your story, Miss Simmons. Well, since the night he told me that Jessica had gone to Detroit, I've heard nothing from her. She always writes me when she's away, and I, I became worried. So last week, I engaged a private detective agency. I see. And they learned that although Carlos purchased accommodations for the Detroit train that night, Jessica wasn't on the train. Nor have they been able to find any trace of her in Detroit. Uh, Miss Simmons, you say Gervasso's hands were dirty and his shoes and trouser legs were caked with mud that night, huh? Yes, Mr. Casey. He, he might have gotten in that condition from, from digging her grave. Oh, Miss Simmons, you mustn't let yourself imagine such terrible things. I have despised Carlos from the day I met him. Why did he marry my sister? All she had to offer him was money. I... I think, finally, she refused to give him any more, so he got rid of her. Well, we'll look into your sister's financial affairs, Miss Simmons. I suppose you know who handled her business. Yes, the firm of Burdens and Lockridge. Burns. Oh, Captain, look oh, out. Oh, my gosh, you almost stepped on that little kid. Oh, where did that come from? I don't know. I guess it just wandered out of the other room. Oh, look at it. <laughs> Can't be more than a few weeks old. Yeah, yeah. That little bundle of gray fur. <laughs> and look at the funny white streak on its head, Casey. See? There's another mark on it. Sure cute. It's always ah. running away from its mother. That kitten was born the night my sister disappeared. Yeah? Yes, I I brought it home with me. Well, I, I guess we'll be getting along. Captain, if your investigation of my sister's financial affairs supports my suspicions, will you put Gavassus under arrest? Well, that won't be sufficient basis for a murder charge, Miss Simmons, but... It'll cause me to ask Mr. Gervasso some very personal questions. That must be the house, Captain. Yeah, and this time of year, this place is a nice setup for a murder. Plenty of privacy. And many places in those deep woods to bury a body. Now, don't you two decide there's been a murder until there's a lot more evidence than I have now. Uh, I'll park here. Well, you've learned that since her marriage, Mrs. Gervasso's converted a lot of her holdings into cash and that there's no record of where that cash went to. Even if her husband got it, Miss Williams, that doesn't prove he killed her. I wonder her. who that green car in the driveway belongs to. Yeah, Miss Simmons said the Gervasso's had a black one. Yeah, I can see that one in the garage. Look, I must have visitors. I mean, a visitor. Look at those footprints in the snow. A woman's footprints. Say... Hey. Uh, Maybe the missing Mrs. Gervasso's has come home. Well, ring that doorbell. Let's find out. I'm doing that little thing. Who's there? This is a police officer. Police? Let us in, please. What, uh, what do you want? I can tell you that more comfortably inside. Just a minute. He sounded a little nervous. Everybody gets nervous when a cop comes unexpectedly to their door. Now he's opening up. Come in. Thanks. <clears throat> Are you, uh, Carlos Gervasso's? Yes. I'm Captain Logan, Homicide Squad. Homicide? Uh-huh. This is Miss Williams and, uh, Mr. Casey. I have done no homicide. This is a nice living room, Mr. Gervasso's. 
Where's the lady who just left it? Lady? Yeah, we saw her car outside and her footprints. Now, here's a highball glass with lipstick on the rim. I see. Well, let's see her. I... Here I am. I stepped into the kitchen because I thought you might want to talk to Carlos in private. Well, introduce me. Uh, this is Miss uh, Vera Lavelle. An old friend. Of yours or your wife's? Of both. I drove out here to ask Mr. Gavassos if he'd heard anything from Jesse. Yeah? Yeah. She's a bimbo, Logan. In caps. Mm. Well, have you heard anything from your wife, Mr. Gavasso? No. I think maybe my wife's sister has sent you to ask me about that. You're right. And we arrived at such a nice time. Distinctive shade of lipstick you use, Miss Laval. Matches the lip prints Mr. Gavasso is wearing on his chin. So what? This gives me the idea that your old friend was pretty sure his wife wouldn't drop in here unexpectedly. This is ridiculous. I don't see... can it, Gavasso. When I came here, I was giving you all the benefit of a doubt. But now you're coming down to headquarters and tell me a lot of things. Does this mean I'm under arrest? Yes. On what charge? Suspicion of murder. All of us are becoming increasingly price conscious. So I know you'll be interested in a product which costs not one penny more than it did immediately before the war and is actually far less expensive than anything even remotely comparable to it only ten years ago. Now, I'm talking about Fire King Oven Glass, the beautiful pale blue oven glass that is guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Fire King Oven Glass makes delicious meals simpler and easier to prepare, and it cuts dishwashing time by a full two-thirds because you bake, serve, and store leftovers in the same dish. It makes meals more appetizing and more healthful because oven baking safeguards not only flavor, but vitamins and minerals as well. Yet individual pieces of Fire King oven glass cost as little as five cents at your favorite chain, variety, hardware, or department store. Beautiful, practical, inexpensive Fire King oven glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. So they turned that guy Gervasos loose today, huh, Casey? Yeah. He's out of jail, Ethelbert. And did poor Captain Logan go out on a limb when he put him in there? Oh, same limb you went out on, Annie. Stories you wrote after his arrest had the guy all but convicted and in the hot seat. <laughs> I don't know how you talked city desk into running those things. Must have been your charm, I guess. And the D.A. doesn't even ask for an indictment. Well, he should have gotten an indictment. He was able to prove that Gavassos had gotten over $40,000 from his wife's estate. He could prove that Gavassos and his wife quarreled because she refused to give him any more money. He, he could he prove He could that... prove everything, Annie, except the all-important fact of murder. And they've still found no trace of a body. And the D.A. knows a trial jury wouldn't convict him. So this Gervasius may get away with murder. If he's committed. It. Yeah, kind of looks that way, Ethelbert, now. I don't think he's going to keep much of that 40 grand, though. How do you mean? Oh, no. That Laval dame will get it. You know, I think she, she pushed Gervasius into the murder of Jessica, and I think she'll push him into a new deal soon because she's going to want more money. Say, hey, look who's coming in the door now. Huh? Who? Casey, it's Gavasos. Who's out with him? There they are, Dan. Hello, Miss Williams. Evening, Casey. We expected to find you here. You were looking for us? Not for you, Casey. But here's a present for you, Miss Williams. Uh, what is it? Tell her, Dan. Make it official. Summons, lady. Oh. Yes. I'm suing for $100,000 damages to my name and reputation. Well, Mr. Gavasos, do you think that... I have $100,000? Miss Williams, your paper will be a joint defendant in my suit. The stories you wrote were so very unkind to me. Look here, Gervasos. If you bring a libel suit against Miss Williams in the Morning Express, the paper and everyone on it will do everything possible to prove you really killed your wife. No one in this world can prove I killed my wife, Mr. Casey. Hey, what's the matter? The cat. The gray kitten. Gray kitten? I must get out of here. Come on, Dan. Right with you, boss. Casey, what's the matter? Don't ask me. Oh, he's sure peculiar. 
Hey, wait a minute. Have a look at you, Kitty. Come here. Come I guess some people are just naturally afraid of cats, Casey. Hey, where did this kitten come from, Ethelbert? I must have sneaked in from the street. It don't belong here. It just sat on the floor and looked at Gervasos, and then when he saw it, he... Hey. Annie, this gray kitten has a single white mark on its forehead. Look. Like the one we saw at Miss Simmons a month ago. Yes. Hmm. Yes, it has. I'm going to have a talk with Miss Simmons tomorrow. You know, I'm getting a screwy hunch that this cat is bad medicine for that guy, Gervasos. Uh, Miss Simmons, you say Gervasos showed fear of this kitten the night it was born. Yes, eh? and I... I've been thinking of a certain possible reason for his actions that frightens me. What's that? Are you familiar with the theory of reincarnation? Reincarnation? Oh, you mean the belief that when a person dies, his soul is born again in a new body? Perhaps in that of an animal. My sister Jessica believed in reincarnation. Carlos is very superstitious. And he'd heard Jessica say that when she died, she'd return to life as a cat. Huh? She said that? Many, many times. And that kitten was born in your sister's room. About the time Gervasos may have killed her. Yes. And this kitten has the white streak on its head that ran through Jessica's hair. Hmm. I, as most people, regard the strange combination of things I've mentioned as coincidence. But I think they explain Carlos' fear and prove his guilt. Miss Simmons, I kind of think so, too. We've got to have better proof than that for a jury. I want to borrow that kitten. What for? I'm going to use it to break that guy down. Play on his superstition till he cracks wide open. At least once a day, he's going to run into this cat. He ran into it last night. And no one arranged that. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Very funny. Take the kitten, Mr. Casey, and be good to it. Be good to it, Mr. Casey. <laughs> Your idea about using that kitten to crack Gervasos is swell, Casey. Huh? Well, <laughs> I'm glad you see the possibilities, Logan. Every time Gervasos goes out, one of your detectives will shoo the kitten right across his path, Captain. Uh -huh. Beautiful, Miss Williams. Simply beautiful. Well, well, well. For once, we bring you an idea and you don't throw ice water on it. You two masters of detection and criminal psychology haven't given me a chance to talk yet. Uh-oh. Uh your idea is magnificent, stupendous, and colossal. Yeah, it but... might even work, except for one thing. Yeah. Gervasos has disappeared. Gervasos disappeared? Has... He and that Laval dame took a powder last oh. night, left with bag and baggage. Well, didn't you have him watched? I thought the DA's men were keeping an eye on him, and he thought my guy... Oh, we're doing the job. nice oh. going. Of Logan, course, really. you newspaper birds a... never Don't make a mistake. Don't you two start one of your riots oh, now. God. My nerves won't take it, please. Oh. <laughs> uh, Captain, you'll locate Gavassos and the Laval woman eventually, of course. Yeah, we'll try to, Miss Williams, but we still don't have enough evidence of murder. I've got work to do now. The two of you will take that kitten and, and, and get out of here. Okay. Uh, where is the kitten, Casey? Huh? Huh? Well, it was on the floor here a minute ago. See? Here, here, kitty. Here, kitty. Cat, it's come here. Not over here. Kitty, 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 kitty. Come anyway, here. Anyway, the door is closed, so... Here, here kitty. Out. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. You sound kind of silly, Logan. It must have gone out that window. Yeah, yeah, there it is. It's down on the street. It's running around that corner. Oh, my gosh, it'll be killed or get lost, and we'll never find it. You should have been watching it, Casey. Now, like Gervasos, the kitten is gone. <laughs> Casey, it's been... Look out, look out, Grace! Oh, dear, these women. Did you see what she did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> Casey, it's been a long time now since that Gervasos and his gal friend flew the coop, huh? <laughs> yeah, over three months, Ethel, right? Yeah. And the cops haven't found a trace of them. It's really a break for you and your newspaper, Miss Williams. With Gervasio's gone, he can't sue you. Well, I think that was just a shakedown anyway. I hope. Yeah. And if he'd stuck around, I think we'd have gotten a confession out of him, too. By using that kitten as your plan? Why, sure. He 
Duke was scared to death of that little thing, Ethelbert. I think seeing it here that night was the reason he lambed out of town in such a hurry. Oh, wait a minute. Here's Logan. Hello, everybody. I, Hello. I hoped I'd find you here, Casey. Yeah, well, drop a stool, pal. Yeah, I, I haven't time now. Huh? Casey, we've located Gervasos in Vera Laval. You yeah, have? Yeah, where? Yeah, in a town less than 100 miles from here. The guy's married again to another rich old dame. Oh, married again, huh? Yeah, under another name, of course. And he's dyed his hair, grown a mustache, and is wearing glasses. Hmm. Uh, the local cops only got wise to him by accident. And the Laval gal is living in the same town. She's changed herself over, too. They're getting ready for another killing, Casey. Well, you mean that literally? Yeah. A servant who works for Gervasso's new wife overheard a conversation between Gervasso's and Laval. And the servant tipped off the wife, and she told the cops. Yeah? yeah. They instructed her to sit tight until I got there. I understand the guy is planning to take his new missus, who's really got plenty of dough, on a boat trip to South America. But she's not supposed to reach there. Well, what's his scheme to get rid of her? Uh, we don't know yet, but I'm leaving for Gervasso's new hometown in an hour. Hey, you want to go along? Do we? Oh, pal, we're on our way. You, you sure we're alone in this house, Carlos? I uh, sent my dear Isabel to the movies. They're quite alone here. Uh, come into my room where you can see what I have arranged uh, for our little trip. I don't trust your arrangements, Carlos. I planned the last job and it went off perfectly. Perfectly for you. You got most of the money. And uh, you did not have to see that Jessica look at you when she died. I can still see her eyes staring into mine. Oh, you've got no guts. <clears throat> It was not a nice thing to remember. And then the gray kitten... Damn it! If I ever see you go soft again about that gray kitten idea, I'm pulling out and fast. She always said she'd be born again as a cat. And that kitten... Stop it, I said! You sap! Now let's get our plan straight. Huh. When your wife comes home from the movies tonight, you're going to do the job. Yes. Tomorrow morning, an expressman will call for our trunks. She will be in one of the trunks. Which will be shipped to New York from where the boat leaves. Then I, wearing her clothes and with her big, big fur scarf pulled up about my face, will take her place on the train. Uh, when we get to New York, we claim the trunk, get rid of, of its uh, contents, and uh, disappear. Right. Then, under new names, we go to sunny California with nearly $80,000 that you've gotten out of your latest wife. <laughs> oh, um... Which trunk are you going to use for the job? Uh, that uh, old-fashioned flat one. I'll just take a look at it. Uh, be careful with it. Uh, do not touch its lid. Why? <laughs> look closely inside the lid. Hmm. There's a thin glass tube running along the inside edge. Uh -huh. The tube is filled with gas. A gas so poisonous that the one who breathes it dies almost instantly. And the lid of this trunk is closed. The glass tube automatically breaks. And whoever is inside. Why such a fancy layout? All you have to do is choke the old dame. No. I tell you, I never look into a dying woman's eyes again. My wife gets into that trunk and kills herself. You crazy fool. How will you make her get inside and close the lid? Ah. Uh, you do not know the wife I, I married this time. <laughs> she called me, uh, Puggy Wiggums. <laughs> Likes to play childhood games. Childhood games? Uh, you don't know what I've gone through. Her favorite is hide and seek. I will play hide and seek for the last time tonight. And she will be sure to think that empty trunk a very fine place to hide. The lid is very finely balanced and it is equipped with a snap lock. Now, wait a minute. Your Isabel uh. may not be able to cram herself into this trunk. Uh. You and she are about the same size, Carlos. Let's see if you can fit in there. Uh, you wouldn't let the lid fall on me, Vera. Oh, don't be nuts. What would I gain by that? Nothing. I have Isabel's money. Uh, I trust you and get in. You are a trusting guy. But hold the lid open. I will. Uh, oh, this trunk is kind of small for me. I was afraid of that. Uh, wait. I move this way. Now I'm all inside. See? But I will have difficulty getting out. Hold tight the lid while I... What? The cat, Vera. Behind you, the great cat. How did I get in here? It's going to jump, Vera. Hold the lid. It's going my ass in my face. Don't let the lid go. I didn't mean to. Carlos, I didn't mean to. That cat. That cat. Crash the door, Logan. Crash it. Get her, Casey. Get it, Casey. Get it. 
Captain Logan. Casey. Shoot the lock off that trunk, Logan. And yeah, fast. All right, I'll lift the lid. Get away quick, Casey. That's gas. <laughs> the windows are open. <laughs> It'll soon clear. Not quick enough for Cavazos. I've seen a lot of dead guys, and our pal here is one of them. You were listening outside. We heard everything, Miss Lavelle. And I'm arresting you for the murder of Carlos Gavassos. But I didn't kill him. That cat maybe let that lid fall. We don't see any cat here, Miss Lavelle. Maybe it jumped out one of those open windows, or maybe it never was here. Anyway, a jury won't swallow that story. Miss Lavelle, we're going to be sure you pay for murder this time. <laughs> Perhaps you were one of the housewives interviewed in a recent big city survey. If so, you may recall you were asked these two questions among many others. When you buy packaged foods, what kind of container do you prefer and why? A vast majority of you said that you preferred to buy foods packed in crystal clear glass. You gave literally hundreds of reasons. Practically all of you, however, preferred the glass package because it lets you see exactly what you buy before you buy it. Included in this survey were many hundreds of young mothers who were questioned on baby food packages. Eight out of nine said they not only preferred, but insisted on prepared baby foods packed in glass. And their most important reasons were that glass was cleaner and more sanitary, that leftovers can be resealed and safely stored in the original container. Now, you too can have these recognized advantages with the foods you buy. Simply demand foods packed in glass in anchor glass containers protected by Tampa-proof anchor vacuum caps. Both products of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. You and Logan never meant to railroad that Laval dame for the murder of Gervasas, huh, Casey? Of course not, Oliver. We were just putting on pressure. To make her tell what she and Carlos had done with the body of Jessica. What had they done with it? Carlos had buried it about four miles away from Greenwood Lake, where the cops had no reason to search for it. Casey, you and Miss Williams didn't see the cat that made that trunk lid fall and kill a guy, huh? No, we didn't see it. It, um, it had gone out a window as we guess it came in. Do you think it was really the gray kitten? Could have been any cat. Hmm? Ethelbert, we don't know. Hmm. According to that reincarnation idea, an animal might be born again as a human being. Hmm. Yes, Ethelbert, that's possible. Very, very possible. Yeah, it's very, very possible. Hey, what are you staring at me for? Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation. A great name in glass. Crime Photographer is directed by John Deese. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Leslie Woods as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is Tony Marvin saying goodnight for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, the world's largest makers of household glass. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.